Hey Internet, welcome to another episode of Anatomy Bites. In this one, we take a look at red blood cells. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, so welcome back to the craziness that is Anatomy Bites. In this video, we're gonna take a look at your red blood cells. But don't forget, I'm also running for Texas State Rep out here in the Humble King with Atascita area for District 127. If you want more information on my campaign or if you wanna see what the other guy did, woo, which is naughty, uh, be sure to check down below. Anyhow, what is blood? Kind of want to start singing. What is blood? But anyways, I'm, I'm kidding. Don't turn it off. I promise I won't sing. Anyhow, what is blood? It's made of liquids and solids. So for example, if I was to have my bottle of water here and I was to put, for example, M&Ms in here, I would have both liquid and I would have solids. So that's more or less what blood is, except it's not water and it's not um, M&Ms. Uh, it is made of something called formed elements. Those would be the solids, while the liquid part is called the plasma. Now, if we look here, we can get a basic idea of what the composition is. And we're not going to go too much into this. I just have to give some background so we understand the red blood cells. So red blood cells, otherwise known as RBCs, make around 40 to 45% of the blood, right? While plasma makes up the majority of what blood is, red blood cells comes in close second. And the percentage of red blood cells is called the hematocrit. Then you have, of course, white blood cells and platelets, and that's a discussion for another day because we're here for the red blood cells. So taking a look, red blood cells, also known as RBCs or erythrocytes, it's about 7.5 micrometers in diameter. So they're kind of small, okay? Uh, in fact, if you take a look at, and I don't have the numbers in front of me right now, but I'm trying to recall if I remember correctly, the smallest capillary is about 7.5 micrometers. So this is perfectly fitted to go through the very smallest parts of the bloodstream. So the red blood cell count, the average number of red blood cells per cubic millimeter is about 5,200,000 plus or minus 300,000 in men, while in women, uh, it's 4,700,000 plus or minus 300,000 in women. So lots and lots of blood cells there. And you can see a little slide there of the RBCs. So how is it produced? I'm glad you asked. The amount of red blood cells is, uh, of course, in circulation is tightly regulated. You don't want too many uh, red blood cells. You don't want too much because then the blood becomes very viscous, very gel-like, and then, of course, you have problems with circulation. You can have uh, all sorts of bad things. And if you don't have enough, then you can have anemia and other bad things where you're not getting enough oxygen to the different parts of your body. So it has to be regulated quite well. Principal factors that are going to stimulate the red blood cell production is a hormone called urethropoietin. And we don't get into endocrine system here. I have other videos on the endocrine system if you are interested. So red blood cells are made of hemoglobin. So the red blood cell itself is made of something called hemoglobin, which are two separate things put together, which do magical fun stuff. It gives red blood cells their color for one thing. And the oxyhemoglobin is when you have oxygen bound to it. And deoxyhemoglobin is when the oxygen is released. Red blood cells are also made of water, electrolytes, and enzymes. Red blood cells initially are going to have a nuclei. It's going to have a nucleus during the early stages of development. And then through uh, maturation, as it gets ready to become fully formed red blood cells, it's going to eject the nucleus uh, because it needs that room for the hemoglobin so it can take up the oxygen and all that good stuff, okay? So in fact, it's one of the few cells in the body that does not have a nucleus to it. The magic of the shape. Now, the shape is unique as well. The shape is there for special purposes. It's not just a round circular shape. It's not just, let me grab something here off camera. Okay, it's not just a round shape. Okay, this would not work in the body. If you had blood cells like this, it'd be magical, but you'd be dead, <laughs> right? So it's what we call a biconcave disc. Now imagine this for a second. You have a donut, a jelly donut, and you squish in the middle of the jelly donut. So the middle of the donut is pushed together while the outside of the donut is still rather large um, in uh, diameter. That's the magic of the shape. It's thin near the center and wider around the rims. The shape allows them to squeeze through very narrow passages of the capillaries. And like I said earlier, they really are, they have to squeeze through some of those capillaries because they're not big enough to just to flow through. So they got to squeeze and bend and they really got beat up quite a bit. 
And the shape also allows the hemoglobin to be in close proximity to the cell surface because it's the hemoglobin that does the magic. That's where the oxygen binds to and the other gases, okay? So the hemoglobin, speaking of hemoglobin, the heme molecule combine with a long polypeptide chain called the globin. The heme and globin form the hemoglobin. And the hemoglobin, or globin, I've heard it pronounced both ways, is important in its ability to bind and release oxygen. By the way, as far as pronunciations go, I've gotten some slack over, over the years for pronunciations. You have to understand something. There is the technical right way to pronounce some things, but when you start going to different parts of the world, you get some very interesting variations of the definition. So, for example, um, my biochem, one of my biochem professors was from Egypt, and it took me a year to quit calling my vitamins my vitamins. Uh, I had a pathology instructor from India. I had a physics professor from China. And so you get different pronunciations. Now, I know there's a technically correct way to pronounce things, but again, you run into different pronunciations depending on where you're at. If you want to have some fun, go look at some of the anatomy videos from other countries. And it's, it's like, whoa, well, I've never heard it pronounced that way before. Anyhow, uh, back to why we're here. So iron is, a vital, is vital in the creation of hemoglobin. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the last thing, actually, that red blood cells do, which is they die, okay? They last for around 120 days. Ding, that is a good, good test question, so be sure to know that one. Okay, red blood cells last for about 120 days. They can travel around the body 75,000 times. That's a lot of travel in 120 days. When they are done, when it's Logan's run time for them, and if you don't get that reference, sad. Anyhow, but when they're ready to die, they're going to be broken down in the spleen and the liver. They are um, eaten up by macrophages, macrophages, depending on where you're from, and the hemoglobin breaks down into their component parts. Some of it's to be recycled and some of it's to be gotten rid of out of the body. So that's going to include our look at red blood cells. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to click that like button and subscribe and have fun studying out there until later. As always, goodbye for now. Bye-bye.